Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is a great joy to be among you. The psalm tells us, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I would like you to give a gift to one another even before we begin. Turn to one another and smile and say, Rejoice in the Lord. We need to be reminded to rejoice. And so we, we begin today with rejoicing, with thanksgiving, and with our hearts open to God. Pope John Paul, now St. John Paul, used to say, in order to look forward, we take time to look back because with the Holy Spirit there is always continuity. And so we begin this celebration of our 25th anniversary by taking a few moments to look back in order to look forward. As a young man, I was captivated by the person of Pope John Paul II. I had the opportunity to meet him on a few occasions. But the man was clearly a prophetic figure under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit who encouraged a, a great renewal focusing the church's attention on Jesus Christ who is the center and Lord of history. Think about it. Where would the church be without World Youth Days? How many millions of young people have been impacted, their faith brought alive? There are many here who would remember the decade of evangelization leading to the great jubilee of the year 2000. Who could forget the 1998 meeting of the movements in St. Peter's Square in Rome? Such a wonderful event, but more than an event, on that occasion, Pope John Paul described the church as a movement. And in describing the church as a movement, he made a home in the heart of the church for every movement. When I went back to Australia, I spoke to one of my professors in ecclesiology in uh, teaching of the church and I just I said the Pope has declared the church is a movement and he said he didn't <laughs> I said yes he did <laughs> and so he traveled the world reminding us of Jesus Christ and calling the church to the great work of the new evangelization. <coughs> now, as the Holy Spirit was working profoundly in the life of this leader of the church, so too was he raising up men and women, prophetic figures who would bring the vision of Pope John Paul II, the vision of the Second Vatican Council, into the day-to-day -day reality, the lived reality, amongst God's people. 
Brian Smith and Bobby Kavner were two of these men from two different continents called together for a work far beyond the communities that they led. Bobby and Brian had both been part of previous attempts to build international associations of communities, which for one reason or another seemed to fail. And by the mid-1980s, Brian was the president of a new association of communities called the International Brotherhood of Communities, IBOC. And Bobby was a member of that executive. During a meeting in Dallas, Bishop Paul Cordes, who was then vice president of the Council for Laity, came and proposed the possibility of a new international Catholic association which would have the recognition of the Holy See. Now, for Brian and Bobby, both loyal sons of the church, who had a deep desire to be found in the heart of the church, this was a profound opportunity, but not without its challenges. So after five years of discernment, dialogue with canon lawyers, visits to the, Catholic, to the Pontifical Council for Laity, the Catholic Fraternity of Charismatic Communities and Fellowships was born on the feast of St. Andrew in 1990, where we celebrated with Mass with the Holy Father. Now, the point I want to emphasize here is that the Catholic fraternity was not just a good thought that, that emanated from men, even good men. The Catholic fraternity was an inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Holy Spirit, and continues under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The church saw something in the communities. And one of the consistent orientations for the Catholic fraternity was that it would become an association where Catholic charismatic communities would be welcomed, encouraged and formed in Catholic life and mission. Under the guidance and protection of the Holy See. And this has proven true for more than a hundred communities now who are linked to the Catholic fraternity. And here I must recognize the amazing contribution of the Pontifical Council for Laity in the persons of Bishop Cordes first, now Cardinal Cordes, and Bishop Rilko, now Cardinal Rilko, president of the Pontifical Council for Laity. They have given us over the years a great amount of care and pastoral concern. A second element which the church identified in the communities was this activity of the Holy Spirit, as Pope Francis calls it, the eruption of the Holy Spirit. And it was the desire of the church to protect this manifestation. As you may know, there have been many charismatic renewals in the life of the church. And they seem to come for a period of time and then diminish. This was a grace to be protected. 
And Bishop Cordes saw in the communities the opportunity for this to, to be integrated into a whole way of life. That the baptism in the Spirit was not just a one-off experience, but it was to be integrated into a daily life. A life lived in communion with others. A life lived in the heart of the church. And this same desire is evident in the heart and mind of Pope Francis as he encourages us to take the baptism in the Holy Spirit into the whole church. So since the day of our founding, our communities have responded to this call, faithful to our commitments and faithful to the call of the Holy Spirit. The communities have encouraged their members to respond to their baptismal call, the call to holiness, the call to mission, to be lived in communion. But there is always more. And in this day, we are challenged to go further than we have gone before. And I'd like to suggest to you some possible pathways into the future. I do not represent anyone but only myself. If you disagree with me, feel free. <laughs> And I'm sure some of you will. <laughs> but as a fraternity, I believe we're called to live together as a people under the inspiration of the Spirit. This is something we must not lose. To live as individuals and to live as communities under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So when we gather together, like this. We need to create an environment of openness to the Holy Spirit. Charismatic gifts should easily find a place amongst us. My goodness, how many leaders are here? And how many of us sit back and think, I wonder who will prophesy today? And we leave it to somebody else. If we constantly live under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we should be continuously open to the Spirit's action within us. Wherever we are, whether we're leaders or not leaders, that's not the important thing. The important thing is the activity of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who breathes life into us. Who breathes life into our day. Who breathes life into our communities. Who breathes life into our church. Our relations. As brothers and sisters whom we've discovered in Jesus Christ should be characterized by a spirit of unity. Unity in Jesus Christ, brought about by the same Holy Spirit. We should speak well and charitably of one another. And when we don't, we should <laughs> repent. This is not an option. Jesus calls us to unity. If we cannot experience unity amongst us, how are we going to stretch out our arms and welcome those who would come? And if they do not see unity amongst us, why would they come? There is enough confusion and disunity in the world. We are called to be something different.
We need to be attentive to the Holy Spirit leading us into mission together. This seems very difficult. How can we work together? And this was a topic which we discussed at our regional meeting in Australia this year. Each of our communities have been very blessed. And each of our communities have a strong presence of young people. And yet, if you ask many people in the church in Australia, they would say, we have never heard of a Catholic fraternity. We may have heard of the Emmanuel community or the servants of Jesus community or the disciples of Jesus community. But what is the Catholic fraternity? And we realise that we did not have a unified, uh, any structure or any manifestation of a unified mission. And we felt this was a challenge by the Holy Spirit. And so we decided to do something about it. And next year, we are bringing our young leaders together for a school in prophecy to go deeper into the charisms. And in 2017, we have decided after the Great Jubilee that we will engage in a mission together bringing these young people, being with them, sharing the vision of going forward in the Lord, not just as individual communities, but as a fraternity. As a fraternity, we also must ask the question, how do we reach those on the periphery? How do we move beyond our own comfortableness? And this is certainly a challenge for each community. But perhaps there are ways in which we can do this together. So as, there is, as we move forward, there's a serious responsibility on all leaders to continue to live under the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the scripture tells us it's easy to fall away. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he says, you stupid Galatians. You stupid Galatians. Who has bewitched you? You started in the spirit and you end in the flesh. Now, For the Galatians, it was about trusting in the law rather than in the salvation which Christ won. For the Catholic fraternity, we could say perhaps the temptation is the good ideas of man as opposed to the inspiration of the Spirit, which leads us in ways that that we would not choose ourselves. A friend of mine always says that God will never give us a vision which we can achieve in our own strength. God will always give us a vision which we cannot achieve in our own strength because we have to depend on God. The Lord calls us to things we cannot do so that we might depend on him and know when we do those things, it is he who has done them through us. This morning as I was praying, I just felt strongly that the Holy Spirit would today call me to challenge us together. about a rediscovery of the baptism in the Holy Spirit in our own lives as a Catholic fraternity. You know, when Gilberto mentioned young people today, 
I believe this is an important key for the future of the Catholic fraternity. I have been incredibly blessed in my life to work most of my life with young people. I was baptized in the Spirit 44 years ago. And over those years, I have seen God do so many things. But you know, you can become familiar with the work of God. You can become very ho-hum. Oh, another healing. Oh, okay. Oh, a miracle. Oh, it's just another miracle. I love it when young people say, Wow, man, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it reminds me of the first love. It reminds me of the first passion that I experienced as a 17-year-old when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, in the book of Revelations, there's a whole list of affirmations of what the church in Ephesus did. The struggles, the, the forbearance, their, their capacity to, to be faithful. And what the Lord says, but I have this against you. You have lost your first love. <coughs> you know, I am a married man. We celebrated our 39th wedding anniversary this year and moving towards our 40th wedding anniversary. When I think of my wife, do I think, oh yeah, we've been married for 40 years, isn't that nice? <laughs> when I look at my wife, I see a beautiful woman. When I look at my wife, I experience a passion towards her. When I look at my wife, I am excited about our life together. <laughs> this is the eros that Father Cantella Mesa speaks about that is so important in the life of a Christian. Not the eros which is the unending lust that we see in the life of the world, but the eros which is beautiful, the eros which is attractive, the eros which draws us, which calls us, an eros which we, we want to delight in and that awakens our senses, an eros that's combined with a self-giving love the agape love that Jesus reveals to us. We do not want to live a lifeless Christianity. We do not want to go on in our community saying, oh, well, another year in community. This is boring. Get out. Leave it. It's not doing you any good. Rediscover the passion. Rediscover the first love. Young people in our communities teach us that. Young people in our communities remind us of that. They're not the only ones. But this is a particular gift that they bring. And <laughs> perhaps it's my personality. But when I am around young people, I feel young. Hallelujah. <laughs> the church teaches that the Holy Spirit keeps us young. And so, like Father Tom Forrest, when I die, 
I'm going to die young. (laughs) Alive in the Holy Spirit. No one is attracted by lifeless Christianity. No one is attracted by our determination to live this terrible, hard life in community. Where is the joy? Where is the joy? The joy is in our capacity to give away the life of God in Jesus Christ. We had a wonderful bishop in Australia who died far too young and who was a great friend and participant in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, Bishop Joe Greck. And he would say to... Yes. (laughs) He would say to his brother bishops... Are you happy? Are you joyful? And they would say, Yes, Joe. And he would say, Would you mind telling your face? Because your face doesn't look very happy. (laughs) You come out and you look... (laughs) This man was fearless. And obviously the Lord thought he had done enough damage. (laughs) But we miss him greatly. And we need, we need prophets like Bishop Joe Greck, who will challenge us. I'm not talking about other people. We need to be challenged. To keep moving on in the Holy Spirit. And so... As communities, we have to continue to ask, Lord, where are you taking us? We have to engage in the dialogue with our culture because we as communities live in a variety of cultures and we must be able to respond to them. It's no use us having structures that we used in the 1970s when communities were first formed because the world has changed. You know, in Australia, we talk about the Salvation Army as an excellent example. When they were founded at the end of the 19th century, they had the most modern music of their time. By the middle of the 20th century, they were still playing the same music. They had, lost, they had lost the dialogue with the culture. My perception is this is one of the greatest challenges for communities, to continue the dialogue with culture and to understand how we, as communities, might continue to engage the culture where we find ourselves living at this time. St. Paul was a great model for this and a great example. So, brothers and sisters, as we move forward, it seems to me that the Lord calls us as a Catholic fraternity to be ready to work with others for the future of our church and our world. This is already (laughs) evident in our collaboration with ICRIS. And since preparing this talk, the Pope has actually entered into this dialogue and challenged us to go further. But I suspect it's not only in collaboration with ICRIS. Because God calls us into a challenge for the church and the world, to be prophetic figures for the church and the world. The first dimension of our fraternity 
was in its founding its place in the life of the church. As far as I can see, that second dimension that we saw under the leadership of Matteo was reaching out to the whole world, gathering communities together. <coughs> For this next dimension of our journey, the history has not yet been written. But the only way the history should be written is through our attentiveness to the Holy Spirit. Let me conclude. In 1975, Pope Paul VI gave us a word and he spoke about the charismatic renewal being a chance for the church and the world. A chance for the church and the world. Pope John Paul spoke to us personally through letters and he, as a, he spoke to us about being part of the great movements whose role was to initiate a springtime of mission. If we move on towards the end. Um, thanks, Manoj. Pope Benedict's not there, but I could, I could quote him as well. Pope Francis calls us to take the charismatic renewal, the, the experience of the baptism in the Spirit into the world. One of our graces is that we have not only the baptism in the Spirit, but the experience of community, which the world is starved of. The Western world is starved of community. So we have unique gifts, brothers and sisters. And for us, the challenge is to continue to move under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit being willing to go perhaps where we do not choose, but giving our yes in faith so that the world might have a chance to hear the name of Jesus Christ and the church might be renewed through the power of the Holy Spirit.